The House voting to block the Biden administration from implementing an ESG investment rule for retirement plans. The Senate is expected to pass the resolution, but President Biden is already vowing to veto it if it reaches his desk. The administration is pushing federal guidelines that would force fiduciaries to consider companies' approach to issues like climate change instead of focusing on profitability and return on investment for retirees. Joining me right now is Heritage Action for America Executive Director Jessica Anderson. Jessica, thanks very much. For being here. What do you make of this? And do you think the Senate votes, uh, agrees with the House on it? Thanks, Maria, for having me. It's, it's really great to be here. You know, this is such an incredibly important um, role that Congress is playing this week with this CRA vote, which would potentially overturn Biden's ESG rule that you just described. The House passed it yesterday. The prospects for the Senate passing it are actually really high. They're going to consider it as soon as today, if not in the next few days. Senator Braun is leading the effort in the Senate. And what the CRA actually does, it's the Congressional Review Act, and it'll overturn Biden's rule. So the rule has actually gone into effect already. And what Congress would do now is they would overturn it. And that would restore some form of fiscal sanity and restraint um, and, frankly, opportunity to the 152 million Americans whose retirements are tied up in how this rule will be impacted. So I'm hopeful, and we'd like to see the Senate pass it as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, this is a whole government approach to the climate change agenda, Anne, right? I mean, the president That's has right. put rules in virtually every agency right. that corporate America has to follow, and it's been costly. Uh, it, it's been uh, uh, certainly... Um, a, a just a new regulatory burden. Your thoughts on whether where this goes? Well, ESG in particular, Maria, is just fraught with issues because the definitions, right, of what is environmentally friendly, what is socially appropriate, what is governance enhancing, remains really unclear. Everyone's struggling with it, and so to set in stone legislation that becomes tough to reverse down the line when there's still such a lack of clarity on framework, I think it's just a very tricky thing to do. It's premature. Yeah, the other thing is that some money managers are voting on ESG. Mm -hmm. Even if their investors do not necessarily agree with that, well, and that's I mean, that that's the criticism around Larry Fink yeah. at at BlackRock. Well, it becomes very disingenuous. ESG it started off as a wonderful concept, right? We're going to be more responsible about how we run our businesses, etc. Fine, uh, but it's come completely off the rails to the extent that a company I don't own anymore, but used to Halliburton oil services company, yeah. uh, likes to talk about how it is, quote, carbon neutral. <laughs> Wait a minute. They're bringing oil up to the surface, but they're, quote, carbon neutral because how they bring the oil up to the surface doesn't net burn fossil fuels. Are you kidding me? No. I mean, the hypocrisy of that, it's just, it, it's, it's completely twisted. We've lost the plot. Well, uh, President Biden and Jessica is claiming that his budget is going to cut $2 trillion from the deficit. He said this during a speech in Virginia Beach yesterday. He also slammed so-called MAGA Republicans' proposals to cut spending. Watch this. Their plans would explode the deficit, increasing it more than $3 trillion over the next 10 years. Because they want to they cut taxes for the very wealthy, again. They want to cut taxes for large corporations. They want to take back the power we just gave Medicare and Medicaid to negotiate, which would raise prices. And they would have a huge giveaway to big pharma and cost taxpayers billions of dollars. And Jessica, we know that's all talking points, but what is your reaction mm -hmm. to uh, the president's claims that he's trying to cut the deficit? The Committee for a Responsible Budget actually corrected the president and said, no, he actually added to the deficit and debt on his term. Yeah, that's right. The two things that I heard from Biden's speech yesterday, first, were that he's actively excited about raising taxes on American workers in the midst of record inflation. That was one. The second is this flat-out lie about how it would handle the deficit. When you look at the numbers of how this plays out, it's actually $3 trillion in additional deficit spending over the next 10 years. Biden didn't even mention that, and that's on top of the $31 trillion that we already have that we're facing right now as a country when it looks at our, our debt and deficits, which yeah. is why these negotiations on Capitol Hill are so important right now, Maria. Well, I mean, John, how does he keep getting away with this, this misinformation I mean, over and over again. We're oh, staring down $31.5 trillion in debt right now. All, all you need to do is see, you know, Congressman Thomas Massey wears this great, I think it's like on his pocket of his jacket, and it's, it's a live updated debt clock, and it's <laughs> one of the most depressing things in the world to look at. No, look, I mean, 
I, I want to be glass half full here. If President Biden says he's committed to lowering the debt, let's let's hold him to that and let's see where he what we can do with that. And we're going to have an excellent opportunity with the debt ceiling fight coming up to see if there's real teeth to that promise. But he doesn't want any strings attached, Jessica, to the vote on raising the debt ceiling. You know, now they want to know if they are going to be able to get through a clean debt ceiling, meaning no attachments whatsoever, mm -hmm. no strings in terms of cutbacks on spending. Just everybody votes for a clean debt ceiling, raise the debt ceiling, and we'll see about conversations on, on uh, spending cuts later. Is that the right move? No, it's not the right move, Maria. And I, I actually don't think there's a lot of um, excitement around Biden's opening salvo for these uh, budget and deficit negotiations. What instead conservatives and Republicans in the House and the Senate want is not only an agreement to cap spending at FY22 levels, which, by the way, is still bloated spending. We're not talking about going back to pre-BCA spending or anything here. So have an agreement on the top line. And then for any increase, have a commensurate cut, and that could be a program cut. It could be a regulatory reform. It could be more of these CRAs, whatever it looks like. But you have to balance your balance sheet. This is what all of us as Americans do at right. home. The federal government needs to be able to do that. And so it's really not a credible offer when Biden says, OK, let's just pass it clean. It's completely ignoring the American people and our role here for some desire for fiscal sanity from our administration and certainly from Congress. Well, look, right before they left, the Democrats in control passed another one Point seven trillion dollar omnibus right. bill. So clearly, uh, there's not a lot of appetite to cut back on spending at this point uh, on that side. Jessica, thanks very much. Jessica Anderson will be watching all of that.